Greetings, fellow Tarnished. It is the Ash Heritor, and welcome back to Elden Ring. In the last episode, we finally ventured to the Altus Plateau, and here we are. We have explored one particular cave, the Sage's Cave, and I said in the previous episode that I would look around it a little bit more in my own time, and if you saw me there, well, it would mean that... There was more to find, and if you saw me outside, it would mean that I didn't find anything else. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that there isn't something else, but it means the chance that there was something else in there is smaller than it was before. So, for now, we have two things to investigate. First is Rosas here. We're going to have him activate the beacon after we kill... Yeah, what were these again? They were perfumers. That's what they were. And this one's a gold eye, so he's gonna drop a shit ton of runes, actually. And he dropped five Altus Bloom. Interesting. Pretty good. Alright, Rosas. My boy. What you pointing at? Oh. I mean, I don't think we needed Rosas to point. We have two things. Because there's this ruin up here, and then there's what's going on down there. Let's go up top first. Where we have a whole lot of Mirandas and Perfumers, which is interesting. Maybe we'll get some more knowledge on the Perfumers. Remember, um, there was a Perfumer working for Gideon, Sir Gideon, um, that we found in the Albanoric Village, who participated in the slaughter of the Albanoric Village while Gideon was looking for the other medallion, right? The, the not, not the Dectus medallion, but the, the Halley Tree medallion, whatever it was called. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, look, is that, is that another one? An omen killer? It is. It's got the same mask. So the omen killers are associated with the perfumers. There he is. These guys are, these guys are no joke. And it's now just a regular enemy. Oh boy. Alright, well, I mean, this one was a joke. This one was a little easier to kill than the boss version. And we got the set! So that must have been a unique enemy. The Omen Killer robe, long gloves, and Omen Killer boots. Give give me some goddamn information on these guys, would ya? Um, where was it at? Oh, really? Is this it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's very similar to the Perfumer set, actually. It's basically the same uh, in some degrees. So, yeah. Very clear link. Robe worn by the Omen Killers. Butchers of Twisted Conscience. Its thick apron is warm, is worn in remembrance of Rollo, the progenitor of the Omen Killers, and a perfumer of antiquity. Strange. Yeah, I mean... Looks pretty cool. I'm keeping my Nox set, though. Um, let's quickly look at the, uh, the long gloves, see if there's any more information to be had on them. No, long, stiff leather gloves. And the boots, probably also nothing. No. No, they don't really, uh, give too much information here. But yeah, so we have... I, I also noticed something when I was coming by these plants. Yeah, look at that. They're passive. I lied. I'm a filthy liar. They're just slow to react. <laughs> well. But these are clearly being used by the perfumers for the source of their uh, toxic ingredients. All right, we've got another perfume bottle, which we can use to make perfume mixtures, which is interesting. we got here? We got ourselves another item that for some reason I cannot grab. Ah, thank you, game. Thank you. Very nice. Alright, let's uh, get back up here. Um, we got ourselves a more, you jerks. Let's kill them. Get their Miranda powder. And let's open this treasure chest and see where it's going to transport us to. No? Nowhere? Okay. Wow. Perfumer's Cookbook 1. Awesome. Um, give me some lore, because the cookbooks do actually have a bit of lore on them sometimes. Now, here we go on the uh, the hunt through our inventory again. Key item. Perfumer's cookbook. 
Oh, we already have the fourth one, huh? Record of crafting techniques left by a military perfumer. There's two words you don't hear t together too often. <laughs> it contains martial techniques beyond the repertoire of an ordinary physician. So we have spark aromatic and uplifting aromatic, and then we have acid spray mist from this one. Uh, a record of crafting techniques left by a depraved perfumer. Contains perilous techniques no ordinary physician would attempt. Okay. So... I'm guessing all... Yeah, these aromatics are... Oh, they buff you and your allies, or uses FP to scatter sparks in a wide area. What does that do? Art of perfumers who fought in the shattering. Craftable with a perfume bottle. Uses FP to broadly scatter sparks in a wide area straight ahead. Though fire was prohibited to those who served the Erd Tree, this rule was forgotten as the Art of War drew ever on. Interesting. They straight up forbid fire. To the servants of the Erd Tree. I mean, it, uh, obvious why. Fire and plants don't go terribly well together. Except for the plants that actually thrive after wildfires, in which case it kind of does. Though for the individual plant it doesn't go well, but for the general species it can. Um, and then we have the uplifting aromatic. Um, same thing. Uses FP to raise attack power of the user and nearby allies, while also reducing the damage from one incoming attack by half. Really? That sounds really good. This aromatic has an extremely potent morale-raising effect that makes those accustomed to it fearless in the face of death. It was this influence that made the perfumers exceptional commanders. Interesting. So we're finding out that the perfumers, who are associated with the Erdtree faction, so probably with Lane Dell. I'm guessing Lane Dell is the, like, Erdtree faction. The perfumers were commanders. Very interesting. What, um... What do we need to make them? So the Spark Aromatic is just Altus Blooms and Miranda Powder. Pretty easy. Altus Blooms, Budding Cave Moss, Silver Tear Husks, and Arteria Leaves. Okay, Arteria Leaves is a uh, tricky business. This is much more usable. The Acid Spray Mist. Doesn't scale with anything. This seems really good. But I kind of want to try this out. I haven't used any. and I I've got two of them, so I'll tell you what. Screw it. I'm going to equip it. Along with our... Uh, see. I'm going to put them here instead of um, with the boiled prawns. Then I'm going to put the boiled prawns down here. All right. Cool. Very cool little area. Some uh, get some interesting lore on the perfumers. There's even another item, actually. Let's not miss that. Since we need Miranda powder, and these ones are, like, easy to kill because they don't... Um, un unlike the other Mirandas, why I was kind of... Suspecting they might have been um, passive is because they just don't attack you immediately. All right, um, so we've got an item here and a uh, cave. Oh hi, didn't even see you there. But this thing does seem to be passive. Like, well, once you get real close to it. All right, it's gonna spray toxin everywhere, so we're gonna go down here. Oh wow, it's getting up even down here. <laughs> yeah. All right, what do you got down here? Boss? No, treasure chest. You gonna transport me to Kaled? No, oh, okay. Perfumer talisman. Okay. It's gonna be some more lore. Sure. A talisman depicting a set of perfume bottles raises potency of perfume items. There are gardens only are known only to the perfumers. Whether hidden on the fringes of the highlands or obscured by shadows inside caves, the flowers blossom in secret, waiting to impart their scent. Raises potency of perfume items. Cool. Very cool. It's kind of like an entire build that you can... Ooh, hello. Here, actually, I have an idea. Because you are a plant. So fire damage is going to be useful. Let's kill it. Okay. You might always these drop a significant amount of poison bloom anyways. Yep, they drop like five poison bloom each. Nascent butterfly. Okay. All right, well, um, yeah. Like I said, cool place. Though, I must wonder, are we, are we truly done with it? Is that everything? Because... I see an option, at least, for bullshit. Question is, is it going to amount to anything? Is there anything that we can jump up onto? 
that's worth jumping up onto. Any loot items up high? Or am I just wasting my time? Doesn't seem like there's a second floor anywhere. Ooh, ooh, that was close. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think there's a reason to bother with this uh jumping. Okay, cool. Very cool. Let's uh let's check out the uh, Rosas catacombs. Um, though I wonder, since it is directly beneath this perfumer's lair, it would be interesting if, like, we find a catacomb that's actually already been cleared by others, and they've been, like, using the catacomb for their own ends. Though this does require two stone sword keys. So it leads me to think that they haven't gotten in here yet, because... I'm assuming if they'd have gotten in here, we would have found this statue with the keys already in it. Alright, unsightly catacombs. Sounds lovely. I wonder what's going to be unsightly about it. Um, I don't feel very uh, confident going around with uh, 42,000 runes, so... Let's see. How many do we need? I think we need close to 70-something, right? Like, it's a 69. Nice. So we, we functionally, we need 70,000 runes. Which I think we can get to, I hope. So, you know, we may as well level up. Yeah, yeah, we should be, we should be just fine. Um, how many of these each? I, I legit don't know. Let me use five of them. Save one. That should, uh... Oh, that was way too much. Okay. Well, we're good. Level up. Let's, uh, upgrade our faith. Yet again. There we go. And we will descend. Ooh, it's dark. Okay, it's a little bit dark. What kind of enemies? What are you? I don't know what you are. Misbegotten. What the fuck are you guys doing here? That's interesting. Any uh, any jerks creeping around? No, seriously, what are what are Misbegotten doing here? I'm overly concerned, but why? Why are they here? You have... Oh, <laughs> that's a candle. Um, quickly check the status. Recording is going well. Excellent. I uh, go back to the game? Yes, thank you. Oh, hello. I see you there, big guy. I'm sure you have another friend right on the other side that's going to ambush me. Wow, you didn't stagger at all. Okay. Oh, no ambush. I'm, I'm shocked. Hi, another one. Here. Have some uh, rings of light. Yeah. Okay, ring of light is good because then we can two shot them afterwards. This is uh, preferable to getting whacked repeatedly. What kind of ghost glove wart did we get here? Five. Eh. It's all right. It's all right. Now I really can't tell with these walls. They all look like they could be, you know. There's got to be some sort of distinction for ones that are properly invisible. Yeah. Ah, uh, oh, fuck! Oh, we lived. I'm shocked. I thought there was a stair there. <laughs> there was not a stair there. <laughs> it was a lie. All right, well, here's the door. The grave violet. Oh boy, what do we got? We got ourselves an omen. Let's let's kill it. Uh, we're stun lock. We can stun lock them. Holy shit! But we can't stun the misbegotten. I question that a little bit. <laughs> you know, the girthier or more well armored enemies should have the higher poise, right? And these omens are decidedly more girthy than. The misbegotten. Even even the larger misbegotten. Okay, we got ourselves another iron cleaver. We've we've already found one. Oh dear lord. 
what? What's going on in here? That looks fucked up. Let me tell you. Okay. This is not where we came from. Is it everything that's breathing down here just... Oh. Dogs. And misbegotten. Hi. Bye. Let's so, uh, give him two of these. Yeah, we'll give him three. Third one's for free. On the house. Courtesy of me. Okay. Yeah, nice try. You made a little bit too much noise. You would have had me there, because I was being careless. But... You jumped the gun. Alright, so here is the actual stairs that I wanted to take. Rather than the fake stairs. So, like, what do we do to get to that area? Is there, is this part of some awful uh, parkour? Yes, it is. I had the right idea on complete accident. <laughs> so, this is what we need to do. I just need to do it better. <laughs> This is very, um, okay. Well. Almost. I almost did it. Then there must be another way around to get up to here. So I'm going to check on this level. There's an invisible wall. No. These don't look like they could be invisible. What about here? No. Um, then this is the only other option that I can think of, unless unless this is something. Can we cross? Can we actually... Yeah, we can, sort of. But we can't do that while jumping. Nah. Over here. All right, I think I already poked this wall. Okay, so all we got is this horrible place. I don't even know what's down here, so I'm just gonna ring of light them. They're just regular misbegotten. I just don't want to deal with them down here. Amongst all these goddamn corpses. Alright, well, we... We drop down now, so whatever's gonna come is gonna come. Ah, winged misbegotten ashes. Cool, I'll read that in just a sec, once I feel like I'm a little bit more safe here. So I, I just... I don't. They're all sleeping down here with the corpses. It's a very, uh, very nice bed. You know, it's probably cheap accommodations. Like, you know... Probably cheaper than your average hostel. So I understand why they're here. They all look like they're alive. Yeah, cheaper than your average hostel. Um, only a little bit less cleanly, too, so it's fine. It's not so bad. Winged misbegotten ashes. I jest. Most hostels nowadays are actually pretty fine. <laughs> um... Where are you at? Here you are. Oh, only someone's one. Okay, Ash is used to... Yeah, yeah. Um, a spirit with the aspect of wings, which takes with the aspect of wings. Do the misbegotten take on aspects of certain animalistic traits? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're about to get that answered. A spirit with the aspect of wings, which takes flight to loose arrows from its bow. The misbegotten are held to be a punishment for making contact with the crucible. And from birth, they are treated as slaves or worse. Interesting. Making contact with the Crucible. What is this, fucking Bloodborne? Do I need to, like, gesture at the Crucible to become a misbegotten? But no, they're from birth. So then it's probably whoever whoever their parents are made contact with the Crucible. Interesting. How does that tie in with the Crucible Knights that we're finding everywhere? How does the Crucible tie in with the Erdtree, actually? I previously thought it was a function of the Erdtree, but now I'm not so sure. Well, we found it. Unfortunately, aha, we did. Purple item. Rune arc, okay. Less exciting than I thought it would be. And we have prattling paint apologies. Delightful. Um, okay, 
doesn't seem to be any like obvious invisible walls and there's just so many walls that could be invisible walls that I'm, I'm not gonna poke them all so uh, we're gonna go and deal with this boss we'll see what it is I stand ready to summon but I may not depending on if I feel like I can deal with it on my own okay all right you know what this is fine Hey, it's a double boss fight. Fuck it, I am summoning. Let's summon the Nox sisters. Oh, he used a, uh... That must have been, uh... Here. Have some for yourself, huh? Have some of your own medicine. We missed. How'd that do? I, I don't know what that accomplished, <laughs> to be fair. So, Perfumer Tricia, oh, who just straight up died, and a Misbegotten Warrior. Why are the Perfumers with Misbegotten? And um, the other thing to mention here is uh, I was correct that this is, in fact, a catacomb that had been overtaken by the locals. That's very cool. Or so that... You know, you can just work that out from the area. Like, there's a perfumer camp right above this catacomb. Wouldn't it be interesting? Wouldn't it be interesting and kind of logical that the perfumers took oh, took this place over? And sure enough, that is exactly what happened. Again, good game design. If if they set things up that you would work out something like that on your own. Um, straightforward catacomb, but that's fine. Not, they don't all need to be super complex. And this one definitely felt different from the rest of them, just because of the enemies that were inside. Um, Ashen Remains? Yeah. Uh, Tricia was once known as a healer who dedicated her efforts to treating misbegotten omen and all those seen as impure. Interesting that she was then... Hmm. When her efforts failed, she was their companion as they died, watching over them to ensure that they could pass peacefully, free of pain. A tale akin to the origins of the deathbed companions. Two things. Interesting connection to the Deathbed Companions. I have nothing else to say on that at the moment. Aside from that, Fia and this Trisha both seem to be women of mercy. The second thing is, is what I had previously just said about this being overtaken by the perfumers. I feel like I'm actually completely wrong. Uh, it's been overtaken by someone, obviously. Trisha, who is treating the misbegotten. Who did we have up top with the perfumers? We had an omen killer. We know omens are another cursed byproduct of the Crucible, just like the Misbegotten are. So to say an Omen Killer only hunts Omens, I think is an oversight. I'm pretty sure Omen Killers will kill Misbegotten just as eagerly. That also explains why the doors were locked, why there were no Stone Sword keys in the door. I'm assuming she had access to Stone Sword keys, used them, and then somehow figured out how to lock the door behind her to escape her fellows. She must have been in exile from the Perfumers. Now, I feel like an asshole for just wandering in here and murdering them all and stealing her soul. Um, yeah. Are we the bad guys? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're the bad guys. <laughs> As we have kind of been in most of the Souls games. Very cool. Very cool. I, th I think this might be one of my favorite of the uh, Catacomb dungeons that we've encountered. At least one of the most interesting ones. Black Knife Catacombs was also very cool. Let's kill these guys again, actually. Just wanna... They're, they're cool enemies. They look cool. I want their hats. I want more of their stuff. Now, does the... Nope. Ow. Okay, he does respawn. Oh, boy. We're, we're in deep shit. We're in real deep shit. Okay. Let's, let's heal. Yeah, he, he totally respawned. I wonder if he's going to drop the same um, stuff, though. Probably not, I would guess. Kill him. He's the most dangerous here. Whoa, you got some fucking cool abilities, pal. I want this. I, I wonder, how viable is, like, a perfumer build? Obviously, it's more later into the game that you can even do it. Holy shit, you, like, buffed up. That must be the, uh... Yeah, look at that. It's absorbing most of the damage. That must be the, uh, aromatic... Thing that we just got. That's fucking cool. What a cool um, design for an enemy, and just like the the narrative, the the theme behind them of these like doctors, perfumers, really. 
which um I get why what the connection between perfumer and doctor is because in medieval medicine they had the idea I forgot what it was called um but like several um it was basically an idea that diseases came from air from like bad air so perfumes were used um, to basically cleanse air, which they thought would help prevent the spread of diseases, which is why you have the plague doctors who wore the beaked masks, because they would burn incense, which is, you know, basically a perfume, right? Um, I know it's not, but it has the same function. They would burn this um, because they believed that it would actually, like, cleanse the diseases from the air. Obviously, this isn't entirely true, but it did actually serve a function. Uh, generally speaking, if you're in an area and the air smells foul, it's because there's rotting shit everywhere or something, and that, yeah, diseases are carried that way. So it's kind of like they were on the right track, but for the wrong reasons. Um, so perfumers, I think, can be tied into that for that exact reason, and that's, that's very cool to see that link kind of explored. Like, you see plague doctors in games all the time, and rarely... Is it really explained why they dressed the way they did? So it's cool that they reference to this without actually, like, deliberately mentioning it here. Uh, I like that a lot. Very cool area. So far, really liking Altus. What's with the jellies? I also noticed these jellies, they, uh, they only appear at night. At least I'm fairly certain some of them only appear at night. Like, what, why were you red, and now you're not? No, don't don't attack the jelly. Ooh, hello. Blood Rose, huh? Okay, um, so we have been this way. But I don't think there was anywhere else to go from the other direction, and I really want to find the damn map. Because I'm going blind at this point. Not, not going blind, as in I am going blind, but I am running blindly through this place. So I have no, uh, I have no bearing. These guys are worth a lot of runes. Actually, uh, good place to farm. Or, decent place to farm. They're pretty easy to kill from horseback. Pretty easy to kill on foot, too, to be fair. Now, question is... Is our big homeboy Red Lightning Four-Winged Dragon Pal gonna come back? I don't think so. I think we, we scared him off. Um, man, I, I want the map. Um... Let's actually go back to the Grand Lift. See if we can approach it from the other side. Because if we can approach it from the other side, we can clear the lift area. All the while ignoring all of the bullshit from ambushes, traps, and siege weapons. Because <laughs> we'll be approaching them from the other direction. Which I think will be pretty cool. Though I'm not sure if we can get to there from here. Might be that we have to go significantly far around to even reach that place. Yeah, I'm getting that suspicion. Because uh, this does not... Well... Mm, 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 mm. No, 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 no. That, that's fatal, right? Right? I mean... I think it's going to hit something else if I throw it. Well, I mean, when it drops like that, it's of course fatal. Uh, let's see if I can actually... See if there's a way to drop down onto this intermediate ledge, and then maybe I can make my way over to there. Fuck's sake. Nope, that is not a ledge. Okay, I don't think this is uh, <laughs> what you're supposed to be doing. I mean, I could jump to that, and I think that's survivable, but then what? Like, jump down? Yeah, it looks possible. It looks possible, but I don't want to do that with this amount of runes. We're gonna go up here first and see if there's, like, a tunnel that we can jump into or something. There's not. Man, maybe... It Like, what if it is just supposed to be like this? Thing is, I don't think I can make that jump. 
from horsey acting. I I don't know. I feel like a lot of this is going to be like invisible um, or they, they're going to look like rocks, but you're just going to fall through them like it's a kill wall of some kind. I don't know. Tell me if I'm wrong. It does look like it would lead to the lift area, though, but I think we need to approach the lift area from above. So this this isn't going to get us there, but let's keep an eye on the cliff wall here to see if there's an entrance. Otherwise, we're just going to have to go up. Get to it that way. Maybe we'll encounter our, uh, our four-armed dragon or four-winged dragon pal again. Who admittedly is pretty scary. <laughs> Definitely harder hitting than the uh, last dragon pal. Hello, what are you? Oh, a wolf. You a special wolf? No, just a normal wolf. All right, it seems like there's more of them around. Any more? Can't really see. Whoa. These banners we saw floating over the battlefield where we fought Radon, by the way. These kind of ghostly banners. Holy shit. What is this place? Millicent! I thought you were a steak of Marika. How you doing? I you should wash the blood off, maybe. I hope you're okay. Ah, we meet again. You sound all right. In truth, it's been smooth sailing for me. That's good. The scarlet rot has stilled since last we met. As such, I've been able to continue my journey. Though rather vexingly, I realized that if I still had my sword arm, I could have aided you in battle. Hey. You know, we summoned you, and you did pretty okay. And... Yeah, that's the right hand that is most people's sword hand. You can train with the off hand, and you know what? She's fucking determined enough that she probably could do it. Now I'm tracing the path Melania took. Melania again, after huh? After unleashing the power of the Scarlet Rot during her battle with General Radan in the Caled Wilds. I should like to meet her. This vanished woman. I think she's in the north. In the lands that lie beyond the Erd Tree. Beyond the Erd Tree? So wait, Erd Tree's not the end of the game? It's actually more? It's north that way, huh? Huh. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't even show up on the map, but that doesn't mean there isn't more. How big is this fucking game? Now. Yeah. And she's passed into the... Okay. Um, no, she's past I, I hope you find her, though, given, like, I know she's a boss. I hope you don't get killed. I, I, I like, I like Millicent. I think Millicent is one of my favorite characters that we have encountered thus far. Yeah, it looks dead. Just like this, uh... Sight of Grace will, uh... Talk to Melina. Finally! Jesus Christ! It's been forever since we've talked to her. Where, where the hell have you been? The Erd Tree... is close. Yes, I realize Only that. a little further till the foot of the Erd Tree. And the accord is fulfilled. It takes me back. I was born yeah. at the foot of the Erd Tree. So you'd said. My mother gave me my purpose. Though now, everything is lost to me. I have to ascertain for myself the reason for which I live. Burned. Burned and, and bodiless. bodiless. What the fuck? She's a ghost. Who are you burned by? And why? And who is your mother? There's one person we know that's imprisoned in the Erd Tree. And that's Marika. You don't look like a child of Marika. They're bigger for the most part. <laughs> them, them demigods. Though, so, no, that was a child of Radigan. Uh, Ronnie, though Ronnie was bigger, actually. Her real body is demigod-sized. 
if you want to call it that. Um, it's just she's inhabiting a smaller puppet doll. Hey, Rosas up, up there. Another Rosas statue. I wonder if we're ever going to meet Rosas. If we do ever meet Rosas, I want to buy the guy a drink. He's been very helpful. Um, okay. I don't think he wants drinks, but, you know, it's, it's the thought that counts. Any new, uh, garments to alter? Yeah, the perfumer set. Uh, just removes... It's it's all, like, remove cape. This one, at least, is interesting. There's a bit more. I wish... I wish it was... I don't know. A little bit more... Interesting with the garment alterations. Like, the, the helmets... Are cool. There just aren't very many of them. But maybe we need to find Bach. And Bach will, uh... Do things. Okay. So, yeah... Very interesting information from Melina. We still don't know who she is. We still don't know what she wants. Um, why she wants to fulfill this accord at the foot of the Earth Tree. And why she needs us to bring us there. Or to bring her there. Because that, that's very much implied here. Like, she needs us. Why are you so many skulls? It's... Can we not fucking kick them down the entire... Alright. I know we can go up and there's other places to go. Hi, who are you guys? Landell soldiers. Oh! Hello, you guys have the perfumer ability too. And these guys, once again, it's the same type of soldier, but they're wearing slightly different helmets. Um, the basic foot soldiers. These guys are wearing like Morion style helmets, which is the Spanish, um... Was it Spanish or Portuguese in origin, actually? The Morion. I know it was worn by Spanish conquistadors and Portuguese tercios in like... It was kind of their their most popularized helm. Okay, I'm not going to come here just yet. I want to go up first. Okay, there's other places that we shall go before we get to the obvious areas. What about here? Like, drop down? Yeah, we could drop down, but I don't see a reason to. Let's actually see. How many golden seeds do I have? Um, bolster four. Hell yes. That's big. Flasks. Add charge to flask. Yes, please. How much do we need now? Do we need five? Yeah. So it just goes up by one every time. Oh, boy. Sacred tier. Sacred tier always remains as one, it would seem. Eight to four. I'll do nine to three for now. I might switch it back to eight to four because I do use FP a lot. Um, but what's what's here? This This is for certain Lux ruins. Lux, huh? Uh, hey, I remember you. You were Rhea, right? Is that your I've name? I've been waiting for you. Yeah? I knew you had the stuff of champions. I hereby invite you to the Volcano Manor. Okay. Take my hand and have audience with my mistress. Oh, you're going to teleport me there, huh? Uh, uh well, fuck Give it. Give me your hand. I always go out, right? I will pray. That you follow the same path as Lady Tanith. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, okay. Here, if you're watching, I know what you mean now. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Very cool. Hey, I've seen you from the, uh, oh, well, this is to the north, huh? Beyond the Erd Tree. Sinister music. Very cool. Uh, so I'm laughing at Lady Tanith. Um, so basically, as some of you may know, I'm creating a setting for a tabletop RPG that I'm working on. And I am running three campaigns throughout this where I am using these campaigns very much to, like, flesh out the setting and explore specific areas of the setting. And it's a setting that is kind of a weird... I guess slightly more down-to-earth in some ways. Um, heavily inspired by um, the, like, Souls style of storytelling and the Souls style of, I guess, world building. Um, where there's just a lot of unknowns and weird things that all have these kind of spider web of interconnectedness. And I'm trying to build that for the setting, and I've been working on this setting for a few years, mind you. Um, 
So when, yeah, a, a friend of mine who has <laughs> like already beaten the game a few times and he said, he's basically said like, Miyazaki straight up hacked your computer and found all of your stuff <laughs> and like put it into Elden Ring because <laughs> there are a lot of things that are very similar to the stuff I've been working on and I think it's just because we like I've been inspired by Miyazaki obviously it's not Miyazaki taking stuff from me um it's just like we kind of came to the same ideas or s similar themes I should say like the, the scarlet rot is very similar to the the incandescence that I have in my setting which is this horrid light from the heavens um, or from beyond the heavens I should say that is slowly infiltrating the world and warping life to suit its ends uh, and th just the way how like divinity works is very similar to how divinity worked say in Bloodborne um, and also maybe how it does in this but um, more Bloodborne than this um why I'm laughing at Tanith is because there's just another character named Tanith. Because um, I have a Tanith in the campaign that this friend of mine is actually playing in, who's also like, she's a priestess. <laughs> it's just funny. I don't know if they're going to be similar at all. We'll see. Let's activate this set of grace. Just a funny anecdote. Um, if you're interested in this setting, I am going to actually put one of the, um, the next role-playing games that I'm going to do in the setting on the channel and we'll actually start exploring the setting on the channel with like a world building series so in case you're interested in that stay tuned that'll probably start coming up in a couple of months when it's more ready um all right you must be tanith and you are a crucible knight so wait i have to try if i say stand at this distance and heal are you gonna dart across the room and stab me with your sword no, okay. <laughs> Brave Tarnished. Welcome to the Volcano Manor. I am Tanith, the proprietress of this house. Raya spoke well of you, a warrior of promise, I believe she said. Perhaps you are prepared to make a commitment. Will you join us here at the Volcano Manor? And resist the tide. What tide? Why accept the burden of their grace, or be fooled by the dogmatic ramblings of the fingers? I'm, I'm with Rise that. with us, against the Erd Tree. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, fuck the fingers. I mean, unless there's three of them, then, then we're gonna have to have a chat. Interesting. Your decision is most welcome. Now you belong to the Volcano Manor family. The drawing room lies down the hall. Make yourself comfortable, but be sure to earn your keep. Drawing room key. Cool. What is this statue of? Who is that? What are these hands reaching up towards him? Very sinister. This whole place has a very sinister feel to it. Uh, this Tanith is very not like the Tanith in my game. <laughs> the drawing room is through the hall. Use the key I handed you and make yourself comfortable. Okay. Is this going to be like a new hub area? Wh which which door? Where's Raya? Where'd she go off to? Raya! You were nice, but I don't trust you in the fucking slightest. Especially with this place that you sent me to. It's got a very, um, hellish vibe to it. Now, there ain't nothing wrong with the hellish vibe. I'm not, I'm not judging here, okay? I'm just saying, if you want to... If you want other people... To think that you guys are nice. Maybe you don't. Maybe that's not the point at all. But if you do, maybe use normal colored fire. Also, mm, not the best exterior decorations for being inviting. Though I do approve. It's, it's very aesthetically pleasing. What the fuck are you? You're, uh... Oh boy. Also, voice acting on this Tanith? Damn. Portraying that sinister majesty very well. Which goes very well with what she's with what she's wearing. Hold on, I just noticed something. You're against the Erd Tree. You're a crucible knight. Are you a rogue crucible knight 
or the Crucible Knights, and thus probably the Primordial Crucible against the Erd Tree? Or are they called Crucible Knights because they're guarding against the Primordial Crucible? Questions, questions. I really need some of their, like, armor. Use the drawing room key. Okay. What do we got in here? Are we gonna find people? Any, uh, other, uh, well, there's someone in here, but they're dead. I have a feeling this is a trap. Pillage remains. Perfume bottle. Uh, perfumer. All right. Um, so I'm supposed to make myself comfortable. How am I going to do that? I sit in a chair? Do we, uh, do, do we use a gesture? So like a be comfortable gesture? I know one. I'm comfortable now, guys. Do whatever you're going to do. All right. Doesn't seem like it's uh, triggering anything. Maybe there's more drawing rooms. Maybe this is just one, right? This door is blocked shut. What about up here? Fucking cool area, by the way. Holy shit. Hey, I was correct. There are more drawing rooms. Why is that one blocked shut? Oh, hello, Raya. How are you doing? And uh, hello, somebody. Grab these items. Oh, hey, Dialos! Recusant finger. What the fuck? Oh. 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 These are the recusants. Radon. Painting of Radon. Means Radon is at least revered here. Fuck is a recusant finger. I mean, it's obviously a multiplayer item, but... Um... What for? No, I'm, I'm being a fool. Pardon me. No, it's not a... Yeah, it is a multiplayer item. Attempts invasion of another player's world. What's what's different than the festering bloody finger? You invade as a recusant rather than as a mad bloody finger, I guess? Yeah, so... Oh! No, so... If successful, you'll arrive as an invader bloody finger, and this is as an invader recusant. Interesting, so there's different types. Um, this furled finger is covered in snake scales, an heirloom of the Lord of the Volcano Manor, bequeathed to tarnished who have become family. Interesting. What was the other thing we got? Oh man, I, I, I can't remember. Shit. I have to hope it wasn't important. Talk to these people. Raya, you first. Hello again, brave tarnished. Why are you As punched scout, over like that? I am pleased to see you again here at the Volcano Manor under Lady Tanith's guidance. May you tread the path of valor. With this music in the background, which is fucking excellent, by the way. I have a feeling your definition of valor is going to be a little bit different than the normal definition of Valor. So what I was saying with the aha, by the way, Dialos, his servant was murdered by the recusants, right? He was invited to join the recusants thereafter. Decided to take them up on the offer so that he can infiltrate them and then presumably betray them. He said the recusants were hiding in a manor up in the north. Well, I think we found the recusant manor. The... Volcano Manor is associated with the Recusants. This is their hideout. Interesting. Even more sinister. Brave tarnished under Lady Tanith. Okay. That's all you have to say. Who are you? You. What in heaven's name are you doing here? The Volcano Manor is a pit of Recusants who spit at grace and hunt our own kind. Interesting. I hope you understand the weight of my words. Yeah. Well, as long as you understand what you're saying, you have harbored doubts from the very beginning. Absolutely. Perhaps this day was always lurking on the horizon. I would say so. But know that the path you walk is blasphemy and leads only to a miserable death. Eh. Before you consider hunting any of your own kind, think on that. Yeah, I mean... This blasphemous path leads only to a pitiful death. 
before you consider her. It's fine. Oh, oh, it, I. It's, it's you. Is <laughs> Awkward. It? Well, nice to see you again. So you've been invited as well, I see. Then we're comrades in arms henceforth. You watch my back, and I'll watch yours. Yes. I'm gonna actually take him up on that offer. I um, I can tell. You're wondering about Lanya. Well, you see, I, after much internal debate, I've come to realize revenge is not the answer. Interesting. According to Lady Tanith, I've got the stuff of champions. And champions, ironic as it is, are oft forced to walk a tainted path. That's fucking true. It hit me like a bolt from the blue. <laughs> but my former <laughs> thoughts were simple naivety. Of course, my heart weeps for Lanya. That unfortunate incident was a cruel twist of fate indeed. But succumbing to the pain and sadness caused won't make me a champion, will it? No. Lanya knows this, I'm certain. Fate has laid hard roads for us both. But such is true of any road trod by champions. I like him even more now. By the way, this guy feels like a George R. R. Martin character. All the other ones have felt very, um... Very Miyazaki. This guy honestly feels more George R. R. Martin. I wonder if he had more of a hand in coming up with this guy with the whole, like, you know, association with the house. There's, you know, they even have their little house words. Um, he talks like Jon Snow. Looks like Jon Snow. Does he know nothing? He just feels George R. R. Martin to me. That's that's not bad. It's a, it's kind of a a different style of character in this game. That's that's cool. I always resented these hands. Their pale complexion. A far cry from any warriors. The shame of House Hoslaw. But that won't be the case for long. They'll mm -hmm. be darkened by grit once I've set out on the path of champions. The tale of House Hoslaw is told in blood after all. It is really cool. This is a very cool character arc for Dialos. I like it. The I like the I always really like um tales of kind of, you know, sheltered, privileged nobles or aristocrats or whatever that end up very much out of their comfort zone and end up just kind of like going full in in whatever they end up getting into. It's always very interesting. Um to have this kind of juxtaposition of two worlds, the, the pampered, privileged world, and how they interact with a world where they have to make their own way. It's always very good. My, the book I'm writing deals with that a fair bit as well, so it's, it's, a, it's a common theme in the stuff that I like. So, I like this character a lot. He's very cool. Um, uh, maybe him and Millicent, possibly my favorites. And maybe Fia too. Fia is very interesting, though. I, I can't read her. Okay. Pain, cool. Be the case cool. For cool. 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 We got all everything here. What do we do here, though? Do I? Is there a place where I can sit? This before you consider. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did that. Oh, 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 no, this is talk. Let's just talk to him, right? This open? No. Is that, is that a chair for me? Just looking around to see if there's any like prompts. But there's something that's gonna be like initiated when I when I get here, right? Oh, also, huh? This is just just a room with nothing in it. Okay. And there are more. There's at least one more door. Also with the drawing room key. What are we gonna find in here? Oh. That wait. I couldn't open it from this side. Okay. Maybe I need to go back to Tanith. Say that I've talked to the fellow recusants. Did you read the letter left for you? Oh shit. That is the tar. Okay, thank you, Tanith. Um, letter from the Volcano Manor. So we got the invitation, right? Letter given by Raya as thanks for her necklace. Brave Tarnish, seek the Altus Plateau in the realm of the Earth Tree. Prove yourself by making this journey, and the Volcano Manor will extend will fully extend its invitation to fight amongst a family of champions. And then we have this letter from the Volcano Manor. This must have been the other item we picked up. 
A written request from Volcano Manor disclosing the name of a tarnished to be hunted, Old Knight Istvan. He can be found in Limgrave. Find the red mark on your map for the exact location. Istvan, I remember him. He helped us fight the Demi-Humans. The Demi-Human Chieftains in the Flooded Cave where Box questline is. One of the very first locations. We see him here. Let's talk to Tanith again. So we Did need to hunt him, huh? That is the task the Volcano Manor desires you enact. You will be compensated once the deed is done. Good luck. Why are you if hunting you are people? If you to hunt your own kin, so be it. But you must leave this house at once. This is a war against the Erd Tree. Okay. We have no place for the meek, nor the luxury of keeping clean hands. Let's go. Let's do it. So he's there. We will fight him. I will commit this sin. Fuck off, wolves. I wonder if there's going to be any interesting dialogue if we fight him about, like, you know, I helped you, you bastard. Traitor. You know, something like that. Invade Old Knight Istvan's world. Awesome. No dialogue with so far. Down he goes. That was, uh, easy. We get ourselves a rune arc and a full color fingers remedy, which is exactly what you get for invading other players. That's funny. <laughs> oh, we get a set too. Very cool. Scaled helm, scaled armor, scaled gauntlets, scaled greaves. I wonder if we're gonna get any information on this guy. Or at least who he was fighting for. I mean, he was fighting, obviously, on the side of the Erd Tree, but... under what banner? Helm worn by Old Knight Istvan. The corroded metal is reinforced with rock-hard scales, making it highly effective against non-physical attacks. Istvan is one of the few wizened tarnished who survived to this day. Uh, I mean, well... about that. Yeah, okay. Cool. That was, uh, that was fun. You get to play, like... You get to basically play, like, Tarnished Hitman. It's pretty cool. Let's go tell Tanith the deed is done. You've completed your task. Indeed. I am pleased. Now you are a recusant true. And a full fledged member. Nice, of the it's our initiation. Manor. This is your reward, as promised. Magma, sh magma shot, okay. Never forget that the recusant fights to tread the path of the champion. The way is tainted, but for this very reason, it is the true path to valor. <laughs> <laughs> now you are a recusant true. I am pleased. To have you on our side. Yeah, cool. Just checking to see if there's anything new. What about... Is this gonna open? No, it's still blocked shut. Makes me wonder. Why is it blocked shut? Hey, what do we got here? Ah, uh, another contract, huh? What do you guys have to say? Have you ever heard... Any strange sounds here at the manor? <laughs> Something beyond the walls? Like breathing or slithering scales? Um. Oh, Fi, what am I saying? <laughs> it just is impossible. I must be tired. Oh, God. <laughs> well, now I have to fucking listen for that. 
Oh god. <laughs> there, I remember there's being something about a serpent somewhere. Sometimes I hear strange sounds beyond the walls, like breathing. Oh, perhaps. <laughs> so, you've blooded your sword in the hunt. Then I shall introduce myself once more. Nice, we've earned his respect. Now, a recusant. Where have we just seen that like name? You. Recusants have particular battle arts styled to our methods of slaughter. <laughs> Why not add some to your repertoire? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Eruption? Stormblade? Okay. I mean, all right. Most of these are ones that we basically have. Wait, Bernal. Wasn't Bernal the dude... At the the shack. You've come to understand now, eh? To take power and make it his own. The recusant must hunt his own kind. To raise the flag of revolt against this sanctified pillaging, we recusants must become the most wretched of predators. All you can do is laugh. Armor are you wearing? and large and colossal. Yeah, I don't... What is this? Assassin's Gambit. Grants affinities and skills to an armament. Doesn't really tell us much. A skill that masks the user's presence at the cost of a self-inflicted wound. Grants near invisibility and silences footsteps. Usable on, straw and, on small and medium straight swords and thrusting swords. That's fucking cool. Alright. Well... Until we meet again. So, you're you're Bernal, right? There was a Bernal at the Warmaster Shack. That was him. I'm almost certain of it. Let's look to make sure. We'll come back here and we'll talk to Dialos in just a minute. Yeah. Almost positive. Also, I wonder if now the thing will happen. No, not to noon. Tonight. Heard something. That may have just been me entering the area. Yeah. Strange. I must have missed a uh, an interaction. There's an invasion that can happen here, but At least I think it was here. Oh well. Um, back up to the volcano manor. And that is our next hunt. Riley. Oh. Oh. Well, there we have our map. Or a map. I don't think it's going to reveal the whole area. It's probably just going to reveal the northern region. Um, we'll take it. Let's talk to... Um, who are you? The fuck is that? Someone please kill him. That horrendous serpent. Praetor Rikard. What? Serpent, huh? Hmm. What's up with you? You're tarnished. Here to put the demigods to the sword. Then please, kill the great serpent. The one that devoured Praetor Rikard. I left the serpent slaying spear in the Lord's chamber. Worthy tarnished. Brandish the spear and run him through. The great serpent. That unspeakable monstrosity. Rikard. Peter Rikard's ambitions, though blasphemous, 
marked him a worthy sovereign, but they were reduced to gluttonous depravity once he gave himself to the serpent. Whatever that thing is, it is no longer Praetor Rikard. Someone must kill him to spare him and his ambitions from further dishonor. Interesting. So that must be the serpent that's slithering around. Oh, shit. Dialos is gone. Raya's gone, too. You're still alive, I see. Well. Uh, okay. That's unfortunate. I feel like I may... Uh, excuse me. You, you're a lizard. Is your name Ari? You're a lizard, Ari. Hi. Uh, you're friendly. Um... Uh, Brave tarnished. Are you, what is you're your fucking kidding here? me. I'm afraid this is not a guest room. What's that peculiar look upon your face? Raya. Goodness. Am I still a serpent? Oh, how dreadful. <laughs> how dreadful indeed. Oh, forgive my distress. I ought to be thanking you for treating me as usual. Despite this appearance. <laughs> Brave tarnished. This is my true form. My real name oh my is God. Zarias. Please forgive the deception. Do understand. This duplicity is my own doing. <laughs> Lady Tanith speaks no falsehoods. And the Volcano Manor is just as it seems. It's fine, you know. Everyone has bad days. Sometimes you're a snake. It, it happens to the best of us. Lady Tanith is my mother. I am told I was born by the grace of a glorious king. That my mother cherishes this form I inhabit. I am proud of what I am. But people are cruel. If they saw my true form, they wouldn't speak to me. And so I assume a guise when seeking new recruits. But you are not like the rest. No. No, no, I'm, I'm fine with you being a snake. I guess that explains why she's hunched over all the time, because this thing's also obviously kind of hunched over. Interesting um, snake design. Most snakes don't have legs. My serpentine form and the name Zarias were secrets known only to Lady Tanith and I. Now I share the secrets with you as well. Please keep them safe from anyone else. We'll do, we'll do. You, you seem... You seem genuine, actually. You know, disregarding the initial duplicity, but I think you had a pretty good reason to do so. My serpentine was okay. secret. Now, I said, um, now the real question is, what the fuck did Tanith do to make you? By what the fuck did Tanith do? I mean that in the innuendo sense. Rikard, this Praetor guy, offered himself to a serpent. And then it supposedly ate him, and then they fused together? That's kind of what I got from, uh, our Mr. Ghostly Kneeling Guy. Whose name I don't know. Does he have a name? Nope. But I'm thinking Tanith here may have offered herself in a different manner to the serpent. That's fucked up. Definitely different from the Tanith in the world that I'm making. <laughs> now you are a recusant, okay. I am pleased. You have Zoraya's form. Okay, there is more. Did you see her? The girl, Raya, with her true face. Mm. Well, if she confided in you the name Zoraya's, then perhaps it is not my place to speak. Huh. But as her adoptive, adoptive mother, mother, okay. I ask of you. Never mind then. Please be kind to her. Look after young Zarias. Her true visage belies the purity of her heart. Honestly, I hardly deserve the sweet child. Okay, never mind. Forget I said anything. She might be sinister, but she seems cool. Um. 
There's a lot to this place, actually. The other uh, interesting things before I end the episode. There's a lot of paintings here, and we saw another one of the Erd Tree as well, and then there's this person baited by Inquisitor Giza. Okay. You're wrecking the furniture! That's my job! Now you will die. I'm assuming you're an Inquisitor from the Erd Tree, right? Lindell. Interesting weapon you got there. Yep. Interesting weapon you got there. Of course. They have the assets. Or I guess the animations. Might as well reuse them. So we have a pizza cutter. At long last. Looks delightful. Where is it? I, I just equipped it, didn't I? Oh, I equipped it in my other hand. Whoops. <laughs> Amazing. I'm sure it's got a wonderful um, Ash of War. Let's um, just read the description on it, though. <laughs> I'm probably not going to use it. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, the pizza cutter. Giza's wheel. Great iron wheel lined with flesh flaying blades. Device of torture used by Inquisitor Giza. As the wheel spins, it causes severe pain and blood loss. The design was adopted for use as the iconic weapon wielded by the Iron Virgins. Indeed, yeah, actually, they have yeah, been killed by this a few times. Um, unique skill, spinning wheel. Strike the wheel against the ground, set it... Basically, the, the, the pizza cutter ability from the Bloodborne weapon. Just, just grind them into little bits as you slowly walk forward. <laughs> okay, well... Cool. Spinning stone six. All right. Well, um, yeah, this, uh, I mean, we can blame it on the Inquisitor, so this is why we're doing it. All right. Wonderful. It was the Inquisitor. He did it. He, he broke everything before I got here. All right. And this is where I'm going to end today's episode. This was uh, pretty eventful. We explored a bit more of, um, Altus before we got, well, a little bit sidetracked, shunted to the Volcano Manor, which is a pretty fucking cool place. Gotta say, I'm liking it, and I'm liking the whole function of going out and hunting for people, but I think in the, ne the next episode, we're actually going to go out the front door and see if we're gonna activate this map, and if that's gonna actually um, reveal this part of Altus. I feel like it's going to reveal up to, like, the areas that we explored, but not, um, to the place around the lift. Because that's probably connected to something else. So it's probably going to cut off here at this point. In fact, I think you can sort of see a very faint line there where it's going to cut off. But yeah. Um, very cool. I'm excited for the rat. Next episode! What the fuck are you doing here? Shouldn't be surprised that he's here, but sure enough. All right, guys, leave it a like if you've enjoyed it. Ash Herder out.